What is up, everybody? How are you guys doing today? Uh, first of all, let's get right into the recent subscriber. Shout out to... I don't know. I'm sorry if I butcher this. Uh, Jost Dolensek. Appreciate the subscribe, sir. Hopefully you're having a great day. If you guys want to have a chance to be shouted out, hit that red subscribe button down below. And let's get right into this video. Today, we're going to be going over how to play Ash. I noticed that she's recently got a new elite skin the lara croft um what is it tomb raider i think that's from you know she just got that um let me just is it i think it'll show right here yeah tomb raider tomb raider see she got that new awesome stuff that's just been released first and foremost let's get into the loadout i'm pointing a lot <laughs> all right so we're gonna kind of get into the different play styles right off the bat, but it also has to do with the loadout. If you're looking for just a loadout, R4C, get that hollow sight, flash hider I really like using, vertical grip, and whatnot skins and stuff that you wanna have. And then the M45, this is you know the better pick because it's a high caliber pistol, which basically means you know if you compare the two, you know this one obviously does more. Uh, it does have less capacity, so uh take that into consideration and then next we got the stun grenades and so for basic ash loadout that's what i tell you guys to do and now get into the play style that we'll get into after this part and so if you want to go for a different play style if you're trying to rush more i'd say use the g3 6c yana ayana how you pronounce it she's getting this gun too so i'll give you some good practice for that but the main reason why I say pick this one for rushes is because you can get that angled grip. Uh, the, the R4C somewhat reminds me of Jaeger's gun and where the ADS just feels really slow, at least for me. Um, I've figured out a way to kind of get past it. And again, we'll get into that for the loadouts. But if you're trying to rush more, G3, 6C. I personally like ACOG, but if you're going to rush, I'd say uh, consider even using Reflex or Hollow compensator or you know flash hider and then angled grip because again you know rushing you want to aim down sights fast uh, again for rush loadout i'd say 5.7 mainly because it has more capacity um if you can hit your shots then definitely go back for the m45 that's that's definitely the choice uh, i don't really think breach charges are necessary considering ash's gadget her primary gadget so again just go for sun grenades that's it for the loadout and let's get into play style What's up everyone? So now we're gonna be talking about the playstyles for how to play Ash. There's two main ones and we're gonna talk about rushing first. And I'll be talking about the one that I more recommend that you play. And let's get into it. So for rushing, we're gonna be using that G3 loadout that I was telling you guys about earlier. And it's quite simple for rushing, you know. Uh, figure out where the bomb site is. If you don't know where a bomb site is, maybe try and see where you saw a person was at last time. And if you didn't find anyone, then I'd say, you know, just stay on your drone throughout the beginning part of the attack phase, especially with the new season that came out, you're able to do that. So I'd say, you know, change to semi-auto concerning that droning stuff, but moving on more to the play style, you know, you're just going to bust in and try and create line of sights on the opponents and just get up close and personal. And, you know, that's pretty much it for rushing. It's not too complicated. And that's why it's pretty nice, especially with such a simple operator like Ash. Now, moving on into the playstyle that I personally would recommend that you guys play. I don't think that rushing can pay off in a lot of situations. And so this is what I'd recommend for a more consistent outcome. I would consider this more of like a fragger mentality. If you've seen a competitive or if you've been in like a competitive scene, uh, you kind of know what like entry level, entry fraggers and whatnot are. And if you guys want to see a video about that, I can make it. I actually plan to now. But knowing that, let me explain what a fragger does and kind of is. So a fragger, they usually take a little bit more team coordination than not. But basically, you're going to be playing it safe and checking a lot of angles. But you're probably going to be the first one to kind of view the inside of the map. So... You know, there's a building that most all maps pretty much operate around. You know, nothing's just out in the open necessarily. And so as a fragger, as an entry fragger, you could say, 
you know, you're going to be going in first. You're going to be probably head checking different angles that you've seen people hold. And you're just going to go around and check those angles and make sure that they're not there. And then, of course, you know, push in. And then at the same time, the best outcome you could have is also have someone else droning out for you to call out where people are at so that you can get an angle on them. And yeah, that's mainly the play styles. And we're going to get into some uh, extra tips and thoughts overall about Ash coming up next. Some extra tips and tricks that I want to talk about considering Ash mainly has to do with her primary gadget. And it's basically, you know, just a breach charge that you can actually fire. Uh, if you know the operator Zofia, then practically the same. The only difference between Zofia and Ash's uh, primary gadget is that Zofia's is on impact, whereas Ash, it takes a little bit of time before it blows up the uh, soft area that it's attached to. So for the extra tips and tricks I want to get into, considering her gadget would be uh, the amount of space that the Ash charge can actually take up as in the things that will affect, you know, in its area, as well as the things that you would probably want to look for to use your ash charges on. So let's talk about that first one, like the radius, basically. You know, you can destroy up to a good amount of things with just one ash charge, and you can you should really keep this in mind when playing ash. For example, hopefully I'll have a clip going on here. I destroyed three uh, gadgets. I believe, yeah, a pri I got two bandit charges in this clip that I'm thinking of, and then a barbed wire as well. That's three things for one utility. That's really important. And so just kind of pay attention to the radius around the explosion for an ash charge, because you never know how much a placement of your ash charge can actually go. And using your utility, since you only have two in the case of ash's charges, is really essential to get the most out of it. Now moving on. The things that you should really be using your breaches on is similar to sledge. You want to create long line of sights or just lines of sights that you don't always have. So that's the first thing to look for. The second thing to look for that I think is really important is go ahead and look for uh, deployable shields. A lot of things can happen behind deploy shields and whatnot. And ash charges can break those from a distance. And that's a pretty big advantage. So consider looking out for those things. La uh, some other two things that kind of go hand in hand uh, with what I was talking about first, considering getting the most out of an ash charge would be consider playing vertically, even though uh, it's arguably a waste of the ash charge. If it's a good vertical angle that you can get, you might as well use it. And the next thing that I want to get into is using your ash charge on utility on the defense. You know, say you can play, say there's like a soft flooring above a reinforced wall that your team needs to get open. You could break that flooring and then use your charge to destroy things like bandit charges or K charges or mute jammers and whatnot. So consider using your gadget to take out defensive gadgets. That's pretty much all for this extra tips and tricks. Hope this helped. Let's get into the last part of the video. Lastly, I just want to mention Usually I go over operators that pair well with Ash. Um, any operator works with Ash, 100% honest. You know, something I mentioned in my sledge video is having a hard breacher as well, someone like Hibana or Thermite or Maverick, just because they can create even more lines of sights. That's still true, but overall, I mean, as an Ash player, you can just, you can kind of just solo it. There, there's so much variety in Ash. You know, don't overthink things. Anyways, that's pretty much it considering that. Just wanted to mention it.